So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Someone is killing beautiful blondes all over Laguna Canyon, and once again, plus-size paralegal Sue Ann Jafarian, uh, I mean Odelia Gray, is called upon to figure out who is behind the serial killings. I, I guess I became confused because there are so many uncanny similarities between Sue Ann Jafarian, the plus-size paralegal comedian and author, and her fictional character, Odelia Gray. Booby Trap is the recently published fifth book in the Odelia Gray mystery series, and it would seem like Jafarian is just hitting her stride. In addition to continuing Odelia's adventures, she's launching a new paranormal mystery series this fall. Sue Ann, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Um, so I, I'm guessing that if ever I can get away with referencing a woman's size, it's going to be today. Absolutely. <laughs> I won't throw stones at you. Okay. Just I, I, I get a one-day pass, right? Just jelly-filled donuts. Ooh, yum. Yeah. <laughs> I better turn on the video camera. Um, <laughs> hey, um when you wrote the first uh, Odelia Gray mystery, what made you think that the world needed a plus-size detective? Uh, well, you know, the old adage, write what you know, and I certainly didn't know anything <laughs> about writing about a young, thin woman. Um, but I also felt the genre was very empty of realistic characters. It seems like most of the women were either very young or very thin, agile, could shoot straight. I mean, I thought, well, what if someone like me stumbled upon a body, you know, hmm. with all my frailties and faults and, and phobias? So uh, that's how it came about. I thought it was time that somebody different was thrown into the mix. Um, in, in those early days, I mean, how much of the work was you working out issues and how much was straight fiction? Um, actually, the only issues that were in the first book, since then there's mm -hmm. been no issues. Uh, but a lot of the issues I wanted to have my say about how plus size and, and middle-aged women were being treated. Um, you know, it's kind of a soft uh, prejudice, you might say, um, where it's, it's out there and it's very obvious to those of us who experience it. But that was the only book. From there on, it was just a lot of fun to write it. Hmm. Um, so it, it, you, you kind of moved past, I guess as you saw that you were writing a whole series and not just mm -hmm. a single book, the, right. you, you kind of move on past that. Absolutely. I mean, no one wants to be preached at or beaten over the head with an issue, no matter what the issue is. So in the first book, I made it clear that she had uh, gone through many of the same issues I had gone through and came out the other side a better person and more confident in herself. Hmm. Um, I have to ask you, have you ever helped to solve a murder? Thankfully, no. I ever want no. to? <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I, I do a lot of corporate sleuthing, you know, paperwork sleuthing at my day job, of course, as a paralegal and Internet search uh, research and stuff. I don't know. I think it would intrigue me, but at the same time, it's it's just so horrifying. You know, there's nothing entertaining about murder in the real sense, and mm. uh, and it's a lot of fun to do on paper. I'm not sure how I'd feel if a real human being was involved. Hmm. Let me uh, let me just make a pitch out to our audience at this point. If you've got a comment or a question for Sue Ann Jafarian, uh, author of the Odelia Gray mystery series, the latest book is uh, Booby Trap. I love saying that. Um, give us a call. <laughs> Excuse me. Give us a call at uh, 1-646-595-3135. And if you are listening to the uh, archive version of the show, don't call. Um, what, uh, what characters have been uh, the inspiration for Odelia? What, what have you read? What have you seen? Well, that, you know. Excuse me. Um, you know, the, the character of her boss, Mike Steele, is a very interesting character, and I get asked all the time, do you work for someone like that? <laughs> no, I don't. 
my boss is a charming man. In fact, all the attorneys in my office are charming people, and we don't have these issues. But in the past, I've worked for people that have embodied all of his crazy characters, such as arrogance, obnoxious, you know, things like that. And so he's actually drawn from all the ugly stereotypes of attorneys and kind of plopped into one, kind of like he's the J.R. Ewing, I guess you could say, of my series, The Man You Love to Hate, although I made him brilliant, a brilliant attorney, because Odelia, of course, would not work for somebody who was unethical and stupid. And uh, <laughs> you know, and her best friend, Z, is actually drawn from uh, the character of one of my dear friends, um, so I just, a few of them are and a few of them aren't. Um, it's just whoever, I, I'll meet somebody, I'll go, oh, what a perfect character to throw in a book. Mm. And there it goes. And um, her stepmother, uh, Odelia's stepmother, is actually drawn off of my real stepmother. Oh. Uh, yeah. Everybody goes, oh. Uh, <laughs> who is now deceased, so I can say that. But also, she was not exactly like mentally, and the things she said that came out of her mouth was a lot like mine, but her physical characteristics were not. And, oh. um, and I had a stepbrother and a stepsister who were just as obnoxious. So those were drawn very, and the father, Odelia's father is my dad, right down to shutting off his hearing aid when he didn't want to hear you. <laughs> and even their home, the home that that I drew for them. That came right out of my father and, and his second family. Wow. But I want to go back to where you said that, that uh, Mike Steele was, was, has, you know, has some reality based in uh, previous lawyers that you've worked with. <laughs> how, how shocking for you to tell me that uh, everyone that you work with now is wonderful, but these, the, but the Mike Steele character is drawn on everyone you worked for before. I want to come back. I want to make a note to come back and talk to you in five years and find out really about the people that you work with now. Seriously, seriously. I, I, there is no one here. There is no one here that is even close to Mike Steele, and, which is why I'm here. You know, uh, They're a joy to work with. And my, my boss, my supervising attorney, uh, his wife reads my books, and he couldn't be more further away from Mike Steele, you know, there's just a huge, <laughs> huge Grand Canyon between the two types of men, except for brilliance <laughs> in law. <laughs> I, I so I'm very lucky to that. But people keep thinking uh, I'm just being PC because I draw a paycheck. No, I'm not. I, there is no one here that even fits it, even in, in the smallest way. Hmm. All right. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy that for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for now, you're going to wait until I'm, I've retired from this job and then come back, right? <laughs> Absolutely, I will. I, you can count on that. We'll follow up, uh, you know, when you're. <laughs> well, and, and that part of the part of the question, I think, is um, why uh, why are you still working? I mean, this is the this is the fifth book in the series. I think you're starting a second book. series, fourth book. I'm sorry. Fourth book? Yeah. And um, you know, I mean, doesn't everybody believe that if you write novels, you must be just minting money aren't you yes. can you just retire uh, it is amazing how many people think that if you're published and you have many books out that you're just rolling in dough no right. so. books don't make a lot of money um especially when you're you're just starting out and i'm you know even though i have a nice form series it hasn't hit its stride yet and uh you know, especially in this economy uh advances are smaller and uh there's fewer you know, disposable income to be spread around, but no, it takes quite a while to build. Unless you walk into a big publisher and they hand you a six-figure advance, which almost none of them are doing anymore, um, it's very difficult to earn a living uh, as a writer. You know, hmm. and I mean earn a living, support yourself totally, and, and I'm unmarried, so I don't have the luxury of a spouse at home bringing in a paycheck. So, mm -hmm. no, no, my day job is my main job, and uh, and it probably will be for quite a while. Plus, let's face it, it's a great resource. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a great resource. I can see that. Um, now, do people, um, you know, who, who become uh, clients of yours or the firms and, and know about your uh, your series, do they, do they worry about uh, eventually – turning up in uh, one of the books? Oh, goodness, no, goodness, no. Um, <laughs> that would be so unethical of me. Um, no, they do not show up in my books at all. And uh, occasionally um, 
the name, like in Booby Trap, actually one of my attorney's names is in there, Mark Hardiman. And his name is uh, near the end of the book, and he just got to be his kick out of that. Um, so every now and then I'll throw someone's name in there um, just to give them a thrill. But mm-hmm. uh, it's not the character, it's just the name. But as far as clients, no, I stay away from that as far as I can. So no uh, you know, drawn from today's headlines kind of stuff? I, I might draw things from the headlines, but never from my client files. Okay, so maybe from someone else. Headlines a fair game. <laughs> yeah, well, Law and Order has show, Law and Order has proven that. Yeah, yes, but uh, anything from the files on my desk, which would be pretty boring stuff, actually. I'm a corporate paralegal. It's pretty boring stuff. <laughs> oh, but you know, you got to find interesting people pretty much in every uh, everywhere you turn, especially once you're looking for that. That's true. That's very true. I mean, it is amazing when I, a lot of times when I'm on vacation or I'm out somewhere, I see a character and and I just listen to the way they talk and how they, you know, just everything and make notes about it. No, they're going to show up in a book. Hmm. So, you know, that old saying, be careful, you show up in my novel. <laughs> I, you know, my dad used to say to me uh, years ago, he said, you know, he says, uh, no one can ever turn on you and get away with it because you'll just write about them. You'll just write yeah. them into something and get even. And I thought, you know, I hadn't really thought about it that way before, but, yeah, Dad, now that you mention it. Well, years ago, I have a funny story about that. Years ago, I was on a blind date, and it was not a successful blind date. And uh, <laughs> As opposed to everyone else's blind as date. As opposed to all the wonderful <laughs> ones people can talk about. And, um, I mean, we were not getting along at all to the point where we left each other at the restaurant, you know, growling at each other. And uh, he said, now, I don't want to end up in one of your novels. And I looked at him and I said, trust me, you're not interesting enough. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so. um, Needless to say, that never, that date never happened again. Yeah. Well, now you you opened the door to this question, so I'm going to ask you about mm. this. Um, you're not married, Mm-mm. and I, I guess you have not been married. Has yep. has uh, has you know becoming a published author has that helped your social prospects? Oh, who, well, I don't know. You know, when uh, Too Big to Miss first came out, a man actually sent me naked photos of himself. Is uh, that a prospect? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like he sounds emailed like, me naked photos of himself. Sounds like um, uh, the guy. It sounds like the guy uh, in uh, Booby Trap who uh, uh, Odelia meets online, who just keeps asking for uh, certain oral favors. Certain oral favors, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, the bottom line is, I'm just so busy. I mean, I ended a relationship just a couple years ago, um, and we're still close friends. But I am just so busy right now that I just, I'm just focused on establishing my writing career while working my my legal career. Mm-hmm. And I don't have that much time. Uh, it wouldn't be fair to somebody because uh, they'd have to be neglected and be happy with that, you know. Mm-hmm. So hopefully once I get a st- more established, I, I'll have more time. I know my manager, Diana James, who's listening, I'm sure, uh, she's kind of on this campaign to find me somebody. So, <laughs> uh, Diana I'm, James, I'm not an huh? easy woman to deal with, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I can't imagine that that would be true. <laughs> has has uh you know writing writing the books has it um, and because of the certain uh, similarities between yourself and your uh, main character Odelia has it uh, caused you to learn anything about yourself that you didn't you didn't uh, think about or realize before you started? Um. Well, I I have found that when I put more of myself into the books, I usually have to go back and edit it out. <laughs> Odelia, my pat answer, and this is so true, but it has become my pat answer, is that Odelia swears less. So when Uh. I find in the books that she's swearing too much, I have to go in and edit it because I tend to swear more. She dresses better. I swear more, you know. (laughs) Uh, I'm trying to become more like her, dress better and swear less. I like that. (laughs) I like that. I I was a little surprised about... um, now, I don't think I marked it here, but it seems like about halfway through the book, there's some uh, su- surprisingly colorful language for a, a relatively, you know, relatively tame run. And suddenly we're talking to a guy who's, you know, uh, throwing around the F word and some other things. And I thought, wow, did I did I just zoom off into another book? 
Um, no, no. Well, it, and I know the scene you're talking about because I yeah. questioned whether or not that should be in there, but it suited the character. And it yes, wasn't Odelia it. saying it. Right. You know, she doesn't say, she will swear a little bit, but it's not horrible. And mm-hmm. uh, But that was, that was a really good point. In fact, my editor and I even talked about that. I said, should this stay in here? But I feel it's true to the character and the scene. And she said, absolutely. Mm. And she felt the same, that it, it was so true to that scene. It's the scene well, between Gordon and uh, Greg. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a criminal and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Adelia's uh, husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was it was it was it was certainly a bit of guy talk there. The way guys yeah. talk, it was just uh, yeah, it was a little a little out of uh, a little surprising. But don't get me wrong, I'm no prude. I just it actually uh, you know I, I liked it. I just was surprised. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that was uh, like I said, it was it was a topic of concern that one word, and uh, but it stayed because it was true to the scene. I mean, let's face it, if somebody's hitting on your wife, you're not going to be sitting there saying, gosh. Golly, you know. So. No, I'd probably be saying, you know, what's it worth to you? I mean, yeah. no. <laughs> no, um, no, uh, dear, no, no, no. If you're listening, no, I, I would never. To, well, maybe, you know, if there's a good price, I, I don't know. Yeah, but it's um, tough right now, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's exactly it. We got to look out for all the opportunities that uh, that we have. Um, um, what what would it take? to uh, get you to give up the law to write full-time, or would you ever? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> again, falling back on an old saying, well, we know what you are, we just have to haggle the price. <laughs> um, I, you know, it would have to be enough money to where I would be able to support myself and pay for benefits. You know, um, every now and then at the law firm, I'm sure they look at me, especially at review time, and go, how much longer is she going to be here? Oh, my God. And And the bottom line is, benefits i mean even if i could replace my income it, you know benefits are just outrageous and yeah. uh they treat me well here i have wonderful benefits i work with lovely people why would i leave why would i leave it would have to be a really tasty amount of money <laughs> yeah so okay. we'll see so far no one's offered me a tasty amount of money so i'm still here okay so that's what we're looking for right Okay. All right. Like you said, you know, we're just trying to establish the, the price. Um, yeah, price. <laughs> and it has not been discounted with the economy. <laughs> I see. I'm, okay. I'm waiting for my personal bailout figure from the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you set Have you set a price? Because I, uh, my understanding is, if you just let a congressman know, you know, how much you're looking for these days, uh, well, you, know, you can get you, right in. It's been an attractive. Uh, thing to think about sending him all my bills and saying, "Hey, I could use a handout." Yeah, I think I think every uh, American citizen should be gathering up their bills and sending them to Mr. Obama. If oh, they can Mr. bail Obama. out the banks, they can be President Obama. Excuse me, if they can <laughs> bail out the banks, and I, <laughs> I was a big supporter. I should have known better. Um, <laughs> if they uh, if they can bail out the banks, they should be able to bail out me <laughs> and everybody else. <laughs> I'm not opposed to that. I, you know, <laughs> I just got the mail, and I'm another bill behind. What are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's talk about the size a little bit. Does sure. it does it matter to anyone but you that Adelia is a big girl? Yes. Really? Um, it is amazing uh, the fan mail I get from women who say thank you for giving me a heroine I can relate to. Um, I've gotten mail from women saying how reading those books make them feel better about themselves. Hmm. Um, and not just about the size, but the age. You know, Odelia's in her late 40s, where most sleuths and books are, you know, in their 20s, uh, mm-hmm. maybe mid-30s, and she's pushing 50. Uh, in fact, in the book I just finished and turned into my publisher, she hits the big 5 So, oh. um, you know, I it's... It's very wonderful. I once got an email from a man who said he had no intention of reading my book, but his wife read it, and she was laughing so much that he picked it up. And he wrote and said, I have to tell you, I will never look at fat women again the same way. Hmm. And he meant that in a good way. Right, Um, right. That, you know, the character of Odelia and the things she went through and the kind of 
subtle and not so subtle prejudices really made him wake up a bit. And um, and that was just a, a letter I cherished. Oh, that's very so, nice. Yeah, and then at the same time, you know, they they don't want um, they want her to be real and and to be living a full life, you know. Mm-hmm. And I live a full life, so why shouldn't she? But it has been amazing how many readers of both sexes have responded to the fact that she's middle aged and plus size. Hmm. No, it's interesting. I, I just kind of wondered, you know, I, certainly, you know, when you're creating it, it certainly means a lot to you. Yeah. Uh, but then I wonder, once she gets out there, I mean, you know, would it hurt the character with her, with your readers if she went on a diet and an exercise binge? Oh, oh yeah. Um, I <laughs> Well, that's actually a funny story because I have been losing weight, and I'm doing it because I just need to feel healthier and um and when I first started losing weight and people started noticing, the first thing was horror. It's like, are you going to lose weight too? And no, she's not. She's fiction. She's fiction. Um, you well, know. I'm sorry. Excuse, excuse me. She's not real? <laughs> oh, oh, well. Oh, my God. You know, Maybe we actually, should start over again. She does live with me. Yeah, she does live with me. <laughs> um, she certainly seems real. She seems like a, like a, a twin that it hasn't quite, you know, entered my life just on the shadows. <laughs> Um, but, you know, people were very concerned that I was going to turn that into a campaign, my personal, uh, my personal progress, turn it on to Odelia. And no, Odelia is always going to be the size she is, and she's happy at that size, she's healthy, and as I tell readers who, who notice the change in me, I said, Odelia is fictional, she doesn't have bad knees, you know, mm-hmm. she's fictional. And um, and she walks every day. She gets her exercise. She does keep an eye on what she eats, even though she strays a lot. She's a very real person on paper. But people have been concerned that that would dribble into the book since my life lately has been focused in some part on that. But no. I You know, <laughs> the new Granny Apples, the main character is in her early 40s and thin as a rail and exercises regularly that's not me either you know <laughs> you're, you're writing you're writing fiction that's the idea I'm writing right? fiction yeah yeah so now no, was there Odelia will always be plus size was there a book before the odelia series mm, mm-mm. no no um, what was, hmm? um i saw another title love at large oh that was that's a collection of short stories about oh. plus size women and oh. I was asked to uh, write a foreword for it and uh, and to submit a story. So I have a short story in there. That is not an Odelia story. I see. Okay. Yeah. I have a short story in there. And I have a short story in another uh, book called um, Carol's Crimes and Grifters or something like that. It, it's, um, it's a Christmas short story book. And I have an Odelia Christmas short story in there called oh. Ho Ho Homicide. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, well, so tell me a little more about Odelia Gray fans. I mean, do they are they necessarily plus size women, or you know, no. I mean, you mentioned a man, but yeah, I I surprisingly have a lot of male readers, um, and my readers seem to come from everywhere, all sizes, all ages, all types of backgrounds. It, it's just been amazing because you know when we started this. My publisher and I, we knew the target audience would probably be 35 to 65 women. Mm -hmm. And it has been. And we thought maybe the plus size community would be the biggest chunk of that if you had to break off a target audience. And I think my biggest target audience is actually the legal community, surprisingly. Um, And not so surprisingly. Uh, Paralegal groups, legal secretary groups, uh, a lot of attorneys. Um, It's just been amazing the legal community, I was actually dubbed the uh, John Grisham of the paralegal community, uh, <laughs> which is not a bad moniker to have. And uh, so it's just been amazing. Um, when I go to like the uh, Los Angeles uh, Times Festival of Books, mm-hmm. I am amazed at the people who come up and say they read me constantly. And, and just the type, gay men, lesbians, black, white, Asian, you name it, they're there. I've just been thrilled to pieces to see the cross-section of readers. 
Oh, I'm sure that'd be very exciting. It is. Uh, and, you know, you probably, uh, you know, maybe a little, well, probably a lot relieved that the audience isn't solely big girls. No, no. It's, um, you know, the, the covers certainly are girly looking, but, mm-hmm. um, no, it's, it's attracted and most of the men have come to the books through women they know. They've mm. been, they have been introduced by their girlfriends or their wives to the books. Or uh, they know me. They have uh, met me somewhere along the line, decided to give the book a try, and got hooked. Hmm. So the, the, it's just been a fun to watch that grow. The style of the, the book covers reminded me of uh, kind of 60s paperback novels. <laughs> it's very, you know, it, it's got that kind of look. I, and I read a lot of those 60s paperback novels. Not in the 60s. I wasn't quite old enough, but it's, it just kind of looks that way. It's very uh, kind of a throwback kind of look. Um, my book, uh, book covers are designed by uh, a woman named Ellen Dahl, who works for my publisher, and she's phenomenal. Hmm. I, I just love the covers she does for them. And Booby Trap, it's like with each one, they get better and more bizarre and, um, you know, more uh, lively. Hmm. Now, um, uh are there any writers who are a particular inspiration for you uh, for the style of writing or just as a writer in general? Oh, well, I don't think you ever read a book without it touching you in some way. Um, but, you know, before I started writing the Odelia series, I started reading a lot of the humorous mystery books. And the one that stood out as the beacon that I knew, I was reading a lot of mystery books, period, and series, because I knew I wanted to write a series about a woman. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but the one when I knew I wanted to write the humor mysteries was when I was reading the late Anne George. And, it, and I read one of her books and was laughing out loud. She's since passed away, of course. Uh, and um, I was laughing so loud that I said, this is what I want to do. I want to entertain people with my, with my books. Hmm. And so I would say she's been the biggest influence. Um, and it's just because I, I enjoyed it so much, I wanted to give other people the same type of pleasure. Hmm. But I would like to write something really serious at some point. That, that's kind of in the back of my mind. I'd love to write something gritty and serious at some point, but not an Odelia or a Granny Apples. It would be something totally different. Hmm. You mean something more like a, a Grisham style of thing? With yeah, uh, something of... very gritty, yeah. Hmm. Maybe a standalone, not part of a series. How uh, how easy or difficult is it for you to write these books? You know, it's they're all difficult and they're all easy. It, it's it's amazing. Like I'm writing the second Granny Apples right now, and it's some of the books. I, I say they shoot out of your fingers like stuff. <laughs> I can sit down at the computer and it's almost like I'm channeling somebody else. And they just shoot out of my fingers onto the keyboard. And then there are some you slog through, and you're not quite sure why. Um, so it's a little bit of both. Um, I find it easy to write them because it's easy to get in Odelia's head because I already am a paralegal who's plus size in the same, similar age. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the mysteries, you know, weaving the mystery so that you plan enough clues but not too many and all that, that's that is the part that takes a little more effort. But that's also fun. It's like putting together a great big puzzle. Mm-hmm. So um, they're both difficult and easy. The the weaving of the mystery, that's that's the part that still hangs me up. That's where I'm... <clears throat> um, most of the work I do is nonfiction, but yeah, I want to tackle fiction, and I always get hung up at the thought of uh, weaving all those characters and everything so uh, intricately. That's the that's the part of the, the work that I always admire, but... People and and even off. even for us, we go back. Like I just finished Odelia number five, and um, you know, I was uh, just weak from turning it in, and I went back and ripped it all apart and put it back together again because oh, I wasn't happy with the mystery. Well, what's and, the title of the next one? Well, I'm sorry. the tentative title is "Corpse on the Cob." <laughs> That's good. And I'm doing something different with that book. I'm taking Odelia out of Southern California and plopping her in rural Massachusetts. So I'm taking away her support group. Well, I was, I was going to ask you, how does Greg get around? He gets around. He's part of it. One and, of the things uh, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, please. Oh, I was going to say, and I brought back, for those who have read my books, I brought back Willie. So uh, okay, it's, it's a I'm going to bite. Who is, who is Willie? He comes out in book two. Okay. Uh, oh, he has debuted in book two and runs through the books. He's kind of a uh, felon on the run <laughs> who shows <laughs> up and out of Odilia's life. Um, so, uh, yeah, I plop her down in rural Massachusetts, and um, she has to get herself a support group. So uh, it's an interesting book. That was a little more difficult to write because she didn't have people and things at her fingertips. Hmm. But it's a very emotional book. That's an emotional book because she also meets her long-lost mother. Oh. Yeah, it was a very emotional book. We'll see okay. if the readers like it. Interesting. I'm anxious to see if my publisher likes it. <laughs> well, one of the things, I, that I, it's just a minor thing, but in uh, in Booby Trap, um, Greg, uh, Odile's uh, husband, makes uh, appointments for them to uh, go places and to, to talk to people about a case and I was a little I was a little curious and it, I mean it's just a stupid thing but I was a little curious if he if he ha- if the character has to call ahead to make sure that uh, wherever it is they're going uh, that his wheelchair will be able to get in and out of uh, the place uh yes that's true um <laughs> it is Isn't that silly that I think of that no no it's not silly because it, there's one scene where they do go to visit somebody and in the first draft they were on the second floor and then I realized there would be no wheelchair access on an older condo building on the second floor. Right. And so I moved it to the first floor. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's actually in the book I just finished, Corpse on the Cob, I have to make some real references to how he's getting in and out of buildings and um, things like that. And, you know, if it's a modern building, you know, most buildings anymore have ramps on them mm-hmm. because they've had to be brought up to code. Um and we talk about it, you know, um, where they're helping him give over, get over lips of uh, doorways and things. But he's also a very agile man. Um, he's very athletic. And he and I even did research on the wheelchairs. You know, he's in a very uh, modern, top-of-the-line titan- uh, titanium, I believe it is, wheelchair. So he's mm-hmm. very um, agile in it. <laughs> I had to do a lot of research on that so it would come out real. And I've had some people who are in wheelchairs who have written me and said, boy, you nailed this. This character's great. That's good. That's mm-hmm. very good. Um, I wanted to ask you, well, it's not so much to ask you. I, I, I'm just thinking about uh, your name, and I'm, I'm guessing that your success makes you the second most well-known Sue Ann in pop culture after Sue Ann Nivens. The Sue Ann Nivens, <laughs> Yeah, Sue Ann Nivens. I think, wasn't there also a Sue Ann on Facts of Life? I think there was also hmm. one there. I'm not sure, but there's been a few on TV. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I, I have no idea <laughs> on the facts of life. Uh, I remember Tootie, and um, uh, that's there was about a minor it. character if there was one. But oh, okay. yeah, the most famous is definitely Sue Ann Nivens, the great Betty so, White. Yeah. So you know, so you got that to look forward to at some point, yeah. surpassing <laughs> Betty White as the as a, as a most popular Sue Ann of our time. Um, <laughs> And, and now I'm the other it, Sue. I'm the Sue Grafton. I'm the other Sue. Oh, okay. All right. Now, while I'm while I'm making these uh, TV references, um, seems an appropriate time to mention that uh, Cameron Mannheim, a uh, maybe this will be the last time I'll use the term, a plus size uh, actress, uh, mm-hmm. best known for her role on The Practice, uh, is Emmy quoted on winning role. Emmy winning role. Well, yeah. is quoted, of course, on the cover of Booby Trap. And do, do I understand? Did she acquire the rights to the character? No, uh, not no. that I know of. I mean, would, if would we like to get my her manager and my agent, and I don't know. About. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why no, I thought that I'd not. read that. Oh, okay. I would have loved it. Um, I, I, I wrote her and asked her if she would consider blurbing the book, and um, they actually used her blurb on both Booby Trap and the previous book, Thugs and Kisses, because it was so priceless. And she was just charming. I've never met her. Uh, we correspond occasionally through email, and she was just. Such a good sport, and uh, she enjoys the books. And uh, you know, I would love it if she'd acquired them. <laughs> I would absolutely love it. Um, but no, at this point, the uh, the film, or I should say, dramatic rights to the books are still uh, open. Um, okay. 
they were optioned a few years ago, and then the option came due during the writer's strike and were not picked up. And then now we're seeing a flurry of interest again. There's been several inquiries about the dramatic rights just in the last four to six months. Hmm. So we're hopeful that some of them pan out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, let's uh, let's take a, a few minutes and talk about the next series, the Granny Apple series. Yes. Um, that's uh, a whole new character, uh, whole right? New character. Uh, and a very different uh, twist. What do you want to tell people about that? Uh, well, when people ask me about Granny Apples, because the, the series is called the Ghost of Granny Apples Mystery Series, and of course it's paranormal and vo- involves a ghost. And the best way to describe it is Ghost Whisperer meets Cold Case with overtones of Topper. Um, And I guess it's my homage to TV Topper, because I grew up watching the reruns of those series, uh, of that series in the old movies with uh, Leo G. Carroll. And it's about um, a woman who lives in Pasadena, and she is the ex-wife of a very famous TV talk show host, kind of a... um, kind of a... um, I don't want to say Jerry Springer because he's actually a nice man off camera. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, shock jock, but on TV. He's an obnoxious TV host. And he's cast her off for a younger woman. And so she stumbles in and finds, she goes to a seance with a friend. And at the seance, a ghost attaches herself to her. Now, she doesn't believe in ghosts, but this ghost follows her home and turns out to be the ghost of her great, great, great grandmother who was hung for murdering her husband and claims she's innocent. And she has been going through the last hundred years trying to find somebody in the family who can believe in her and prove her innocent. And that's how the first book starts out. And it's very funny. The ghost is adorable. I mean, she's cantankerous. She's a pill. (laughs) And um, she's a lot of fun. I patterned her lightly after the late Ruth Gordon. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. That, that, yeah, that explains a lot. Yeah. And right, if you know who Ruth Gordon is, you know who Granny is. Right. Uh, and I patterned her after her a bit, and uh, it's a delightful series. I At first, when I started writing it, um, I knew my publisher was looking for a paranormal series, and at first I wasn't sure how I was going to tackle that. It has been a joy to write. It's been so much fun to write. Hmm. And I'm writing for you now. Have you had to do... <clears throat> For some time like that, do you do research for that, or you just uh, open your mind to it and go from there? A little bit of both. I did a lot of research on um, the beliefs people have about ghosts. Um, you know, I did a lot of reading. I watched a lot of TV shows. <clears throat> Excuse me. For a while, I just kind of immersed myself into that culture to see what are the different beliefs, contradictory beliefs and, and whatever, and pulled out of there the the template for what I was going to have happen in my books. Hmm. And I didn't want scary ghosts. Um, you know, my, my publisher made it clear they wanted what's called a cozy, a very light read, but funny. Okay. And um, so I didn't want to scare the pants off people, and I wanted kind of the warm and friendly approach. So um, that's what I created, and I created a whole culture out of all the information I researched, a culture that fit my books. Mm -hmm. And once I had that in place, it was very easy uh, to get into it and write. And um, the ghost, Granny, is from Julian, California, which I don't know what you know about Julian, but it's a charming old gold rush town in Southern California. It's just north of San Diego. And I love Julian. I've been down there many times to stay. So I placed it there. And so... To put the book there in a, such a tiny environment and take the readers all throughout this tourist town that is has so much rich history was a hoot. It was so much fun. Hmm. So much fun. And the second book opens up on Catalina Island. Oh. <clears throat> so I'm having fun putting it in different places as well. Now, is there any possibility that down the line uh, your two leads could uh, cross paths? I don't know. I, I kind of think if they did, it'd be too contrived. Hmm. I, I just don't see that happening right now. Um, but you never know. But even the books, you know, the Odelia books are a little more hard-hitting. Um, there's a lot more sex in them, uh, a lot more violence in them. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so I don't know if I want them to spill into each other. Okay. We'll see. You never know. But right now, no. And how will you uh, pursue two series? Will you, you know, six months on this one, six months on that one? Will you, you write simultaneously? How do you do that? Well, and and they are. They are delivered six months apart. So, oh. um, and it's funny, when you're doing books, you just don't feel like I just turned in Odelia number five, and I'm working on Granny number two. And in the middle of Granny number two, I will get galleys back or proofs and things. Uh, I'll have to re-edit Odelia number five in the middle of it. So at some point, you do work simultaneously on them. Um, I keep them apart in my mind by I write Granny Apples in the third person. I write mm-hmm. Odelia in the first person. That's how I separate them in my brain. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, you know, right now I'm working on Granny. I'm not working on anything on Odelia except promotion for the book that just came out. And I'll just keep pumping that way until my publisher throws something about Odelia in my lap and says, we need this. (laughs) And at the end of the year, I push only on Odelia. That one's due January 1st, and Granny's due August 1st. So... Hmm. um, you know, I, I carve out the time for them individually at the end. I don't let one in, interfere with the other. Now, in uh, in the Odelia series, uh, Odelia's boss, Mike Steele, is mm-hmm. very firm about getting those billable hours in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, how does, uh, how does Sue Ann deal with that? I, that's a very real part of my life, too. Anyone who works in a law firm, is a slave to billable hours. If you're a paralegal or an attorney, you're a slave to those billables, and uh, I have to get my billables in. So um, I work that in. I don't start work till about 10. Um, I come in anytime between 9.30 and 10.30. They're very gracious here about letting me have a little flex time with my hours, but those hours still have to be met. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they can't slide just because I'm off writing books. Okay, just checking. Yeah. When I'm your at book conferences, I'm sitting there with my BlackBerry checking my email. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, your boss, mon- your boss actually sent me an email and said, see exactly what her attitude about those billable hours is. We're just <laughs> here, back here in the office, we're just kind of curious. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're going to be checking to see if I bill anybody for this hour, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now, now uh, as we kind of wind down here, uh, the uh, speaking of what you do when you're not billing hours, I understand you're getting ready for something called the Mud Run at Camp yeah. Pendleton. Does that does that tie into you telling me earlier that you're getting on kind of an exercise and uh, kind of diet kick yeah. yourself? Yeah. Well, you know, I put myself on an exercise and I don't want to say diet program. I, I like to say choosing better, you know, mm-hmm. a healthier lifestyle, you might say. Um, I don't diet. I just choose better these days. And... Um, and I was I was doing okay, but it was stalling. And then one day I was watching TV, and there was a segment in some show about the Camp Pendleton Mud Run. And I looked at that, and I went, I can do that. Now, okay, I'm 100 pounds overweight, I'm older than God, and I'm looking at this thing, and it's a 10K through a military obstacle course that they hose down with water just for the fun of it. And I... I don't know if I lost my mind or what, but I just said, I can do that. And so I started telling people I was going to do it, and I rounded up a whole bunch of people from the law firm who were doing it with me. I have some personal friends who are doing it with me, and by the way, I'm going to do it. Well, then the reality is I don't want to die while doing it, so I darn well better get in shape. So it's really uh, pushed me to stick to a healthier program. Hmm. So um, it's going to be interesting. I'll probably end up walking the entire 10K. I, I've, I've only been able, a few weeks ago, I ran a half mile for the first time in 30 years without stopping. <laughs> so wow. I can't imagine running a 10K. But um, the funny thing, my boss here at the office, I came in and said, guess what, I ran a half mile this morning. He went, intentionally or were, was a dog chasing you? Um, and, by the way, that's going to be <laughs> the opening of a new book. <laughs> I decided that was too priceless a comment. Mike Steele's going to be saying that to Odelia. Uh, that seems appropriate. Yeah, it seems appropriate. But um, yeah, I, I'm every day I'm exercising and working towards building my endurance so I can go through this obstacle course. And yes, I'm insane. That's great. Yeah. I wish so, you luck. I wish, I wish you much luck with that. All I want to do is finish it. You know. 
I'm not looking to finish it in great time. I'm just looking to finish it. And I, I just have this attitude that if you don't challenge yourself, you will never know what you're truly capable of doing. Hmm. And that was a personal challenge for me. So June 6th. Well, my June funeral 6th. will be June 9th. So oh. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you expect to live three days following, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I see you. That, that, that'll take them that long to decide to pull the plug on the life support. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> listen, um, folks, you can uh, <laughs> you can order uh, Booby Trap, the, the fourth and uh, latest installment in the Odelia Gray Mystery Series at uh, great bookstores everywhere or online at Amazon.com or MR Media, MrMedia.com. And uh, you can keep up on the latest news from Sue Ann Jafarian at her website, www.sueannjafarian.com. Uh, that's all solid, S-U-E-A-N-N-J-A-F-F-A-R-I-A-N.com. Or check out her blog. It's www.sueannjafarian.blogspot.com. And uh, I believe at your website people can also get information about your uh, upcoming uh, book signings. I know you have one tomorrow. That's uh, February 12th, uh, 11 to 1 uh, Pacific time at the Barnes & Noble at Fashion Island in Newport Beach. Yeah. And the official launch party for Booby Trap is Saturday, uh, February 14th. That's Valentine's Day from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Mystery Bookstore in Westwood. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Good party. Everybody that. come out if you're in the area. Come on out. Food, cool. drinks, and door prizes. Well, uh, Sue Ann, uh, the, the book was a lot of fun to read, and it's Thank been you. a delight to have you on the show. And I appreciate Thanks you uh, joining us for Mr. Yeah. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks. Continued good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Take care. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. And, uh, folks, for more great author interviews, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Sarah Zarr, Jody Thomas, John Darden, uh, Tim Dorsey, Peter Gollenbach, James Sheehan, Kristen Harmel, Michelle Cameron, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Sendcast, or Odeo. You can also now subscribe to Mr. Media's uh, blog on the Kindle uh, reader, the ebook reader. Um, subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. And you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash Andelman. Thanks so much for joining me today. I always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day to spend it with us. Come on back real soon. Bye-bye.